Guess who decides to join the conversation? Elon Musk. He's like, at some point, it will be real though. We need mathematical verifiability. We need to know that it's going to work in all cases because human lives could depend on this. $1.3 trillion are lost every year due to software glitches that could be solved if people used formal verification. And the reason that I'm even talking about this today is because last week on X, I made this post that went semi-viral where I said I spent $200 on O1 Pro and casually asked it to solve physics. Now, any real physicist is gonna look at that and laugh and look at that as ridiculous. And it is meant to be ridiculous, the shit post, but it's also fun. And to some degree, I want AI that can do that. So I just wanted to put it out there and see what happens. And to no one's surprise, a bunch of physicists got really pissed for lack of better word, but it ended up being a great conversation. And I built a tool called Science Flow that is open source, it's online so anyone can use it. And it automates the entire scientific pipeline for a specific subfield called number theory. I chose number theory because number theory is the only science that can be verified in silico. It's one of the few sciences, I should say. And I use a functional programming language called Lean, which I'm so excited to talk to you today about, to verify the conjecture that it hypothesized. So this tool allows you to explore a research idea by prompting it. So for example, I'm going to give it the prompt, what happens if we modify the Colatz sequence? And the Colatz sequence is an unproven concept in mathematics, which this could potentially prove if it does the right thing, but we're gonna find out if it works or not. So what it's doing is it's using GPT-4 to come up with a conjecture, and it's formalizing that conjecture into a programming language called Lean that it can then verify. Once I type a prompt into this, it's going to generate the entire scientific pipeline, the pattern analysis, the automated discovery, the proof validation. It's going to use Lean to both generate a conjecture and then prove it. And this is super exciting. It's different than Python. Python cannot prove a conjecture. It can merely demonstrate it. And this is going to be very useful in software. It's going to be useful in science. It's going to be useful in so many different fields. I'm just going to go through this thread because it's really useful for learning purposes to go through this. So Matthew Calkins, great guy. You should follow him on X. He's like, no, it did a good impression of how someone would summarize their work if they had invented new math and made new predictions, but it didn't actually do those things. Now, I replied here, just an impression sells it short. It created a mathematical framework with explicit axioms and falsifiable predictions. Is it correct? No idea. But that's how theoretical physics works. You propose testable ideas and see what survives experiment. Was I trolling Matthew? To some degree, yes, but I kind of semi believe it, right? Like I don't have enough of a background to know if this conjecture is legit, but he does. And I want AI to be able to do this. And so my thinking is like, well, if that's not the case, can you explain why? And he's like, no, it's word salad. And I was like, well, explain if this is word salad. And this immediately became another meme. I was like, it proposed trans Planckian hyper algebraic sheaves with axioms like hyper commutation and scaling laws, plus testable predictions like gamma ray dispersion. And this was hilarious. People on X are hilarious. But the result of this is like, obviously, I know this is not like a legit theory, but it's getting impressions on X and it's getting engagement. And guess who decides to join the conversation? Elon Musk replies to this and people are like, Siraj just saw physics with AI and everyone's like laughing and Elon's laughing too. He's like, at some point it will be real though. So shout out to Elon Musk. That's exactly right. I replied to that. Yes, exactly, Elon. We're gonna meme this stuff into existence. But, but more seriously, these physicists, especially Matthew had a great point. I came back three days later and all jokes aside, I do believe this part. I do believe that with the right prompting, we can get AI to output usable, verifiable, mathematically sound results. And I thought that by prompting it even further, I could do that. So I did that. I prompted it further. I used Claude to make those prompts even better and it completely generated different proofs than it initially did. And although it did have math, it still wasn't correct. And they corrected me there. They're like it's still word salad. There's not a specific logical misstep or disagreement with the physics because there isn't even anything substantial enough to be wrong or disagree with. It is buzzwords strung together in any way, in a way that sounds nice, but doesn't actually mean anything. So I said, thank you for the feedback. Can you please give me some suggestions on how we can improve this to be mathematically consistent. Matthew actually says some great points. He's like, 
check out alpha geometry, and then look into lean, which is one way to catch inconsistencies in math, which brought me to this project that I built that I wanted to share today in this video. This was a great conversation. Elon piped in, I love X. Check out that conversation if you guys want a good read. Matthew was right. Alpha Geometry is an incredible paper out of Google. It came out earlier this year. A bunch of people put out great videos on this, but Alpha Geometry is really cool because it combines a neural network with a symbolic reasoning engine. And this is really the key idea behind AlphaGo, or I should say was, Alpha Zero, all of these really radical new techniques combine this kind of self-play idea, this com combination of reinforcement learning with a neural network. And that's essentially what it did. It took a neural network and it used it to first propose different strategies. And then it used this deduction engine. It's called formally a deduction database to verify using what's called algebraic relations at DD plus AR. You're going to see those acronyms a lot in this space, but it basically means this is a way to mathematically prove that this conjecture, this statement, this theorem is not just true for a few cases like you could prove in Python. It's true for all cases and you can't prove that in Python. And so for the alpha geometry paper, they use a specific functional programming language to make those propositions, I should say. And it was trained on all of these possible logic symbols that it could go. It was trained on all of this the symbolism of geometry and they chose geometry because it's a very specific subset of math that and it was decidable, which means it can be proven. And it did that all in silico. And when when they did this, they generated 100 million synthetic data examples. That is the core idea that Alpha Zero used of generating self learned synthetic data. And he used that to improve its predictions capability, which is awesome. Alpha geometry is very cool. So I went into the GitHub and I was like, okay, let's check this out because it solved the Olympiad and it solved it at a level that was almost close to gold medalist, right? That's what the chart showed. Here's alpha geometry and here's the gold medalist. That's cool. They open source the code. Maybe we could use it. Well, I looked into it and it's actually not that usable. It requires a lot of GPU power, not surprisingly to many people, but don't worry. I looked at the paper and then I started learning about different projects and repositories in the space. And this space has such a deep history and a rich literature. There's so many incredible people working in this space. It's so exciting for me personally because Back in 2018, 2019, 2020, before ChatGPT, AI was a lot more complex. It was a lot more hard to do as an engineer or as a data scientist. You had to build these models, you'd have to tune these hyperparameters. And now a lot of it is just API integrations. It's just prompting. It's a lot easier than it was before. And what this field of automated theorem proving ATP provides is a new way of introducing difficult problems that are worth solving. The reason that they're worth solving, I found this great NeurIPS slideshow from last year that showed that $1.56 trillion annually are lost due to software failures. Um, whether it's in finance, $440 million glitches, or in self-driving cars, you know, it could kill somebody, or it's an in internet protocol, safety, reliability, all of these things, we need mathematical verifiability. We need to know that it's going to work in all cases because Human lives could depend on this. Drug discovery, this could be applied to drug discovery as well. Can we prove that a certain drug is going to bind? It's gonna have a certain what's called binding affinity and that's in the field of molecular docking before we go into the wet lab and test it out. And that's gonna save time and energy and that's gonna bring drugs to market faster. So there's all of these use cases for automated theorem proving and what this conversation on X really highlighted is even though ChatGPT Pro is great, it is great, it's not capable of generating new verifiable math right off the bat. Now it can with the right prompt. So my original thought is true that it can with the right prompt. And I'll show you that when I show you how I built this tool, Science Flow, because at the end of the day, I am prompting it to generate this mathematical conjecture in lean specifically, which it then proves through the verification sample. And then it uses AI peer review to verify that result as well. And then we could submit that to archive at the end by downloading the paper and then looking at it. Now, this is still a work in progress. Like obviously this paper needs formatting, it needs citations, it needs a lot of work, but this is a proof of concept. I want more people to be building this. And if you're interested in AI and science and education and all the applications of it, make sure to follow me, hit subscribe. This is gonna be an incredible journey, I promise you. 
I'm so excited to learn with you. This was just a start. There's Alpha Geometry is an amazing paper. I'm so excited to have read it, looked at the code, and there's so many different research papers in this space. So what I did was I found a collection of them, which is this GitHub right here, Deep Learning for Theorem Proving. And then I went through all of them and I did some research and I tried to find the similar insights that all these different papers had. And what I did was I used a tool called Recall to find those insights. And the way I did that was I opened up a paper, I click on this Chrome extension for Recall, and what it's gonna do is it's going to summarize that paper. And once it's summarized that, then I can turn it into a knowledge graph. And it connects to my existing knowledge data, which I can just keep bookmarking. So I can say, okay, Putnam Bench, this is a great paper in the automated theorem proving space. Let me save this paper and then I can look at it in the app and then I can compare it to other papers that I have saved. So I can go to knowledge graph and you can see that I have this knowledge graph of all the different papers that I've saved. And it has all the terms out there in this connected acyclic graph. And I can go through and I can see which papers are connected. And I can see that these two papers are connected by the single idea. And that idea is alpha zero. So if I can click on alpha zero, I can see that these two papers, actually one is a video, Deep Learning and Interactive Theorem Proving, as well as this paper both mention alpha zero. So that's actually really useful. And I've used that in this video to focus on alpha zero as a learning methodology for science flow. This idea of self play is really important of synthetic data generation. We're not going to be able to find a library of all known mathematics. It doesn't exist yet. We haven't formalized so much of mathematics yet. There exist dozens and perhaps hundreds of papers, math papers that still haven't been formalized into computers. There's so much work to still do to formalize those papers. When it comes to Lean as a programming language, it was introduced by Microsoft. And it's one of the great things that Microsoft has done in this past decade. I have to say, having learned more about automated theorem proving, this is actually extremely important to the future of deep learning. Like this is how we save lives at scale for self-driving cars. This is how we prevent financial fraud at scale. This is how we create a true knowledge base of truth. It's an actual knowledge base of mathematical truth that we can construct and build on infinitely over time. And we can do that with these type of functional programming languages like Lean. So what are some examples of this? Because there's a lot of talk about Lean, but we need to, I need to see some concrete examples. And so what I did is I asked Claude to create some concrete examples of Lean for some different use cases. So like, why would I not just use Python, for example? So here is a great example. So a basic math proof of adding zero to any number gives that number. We can do that in Lean in a web editor. So I'm gonna take this proof and I'm going to go into the Lean Web Editor right here and I'm gonna type it in and then it's going to verify if that is mathematically provable. I can just type it in here. So this one is not provable. How about this one? A simple program verification. Proving a function never returns a negative. Now this is very important. Healthcare devices, you never want that stuff to return a negative. The entire system could stop. Like a heart monitor, a pacemaker, that kind of stuff. If you're SSH into someone's internal body, which we will increasingly over time as AI and biology combines, you don't want a function that returns a negative. So you wanna prove that, not just for one or two or a thousand cases, but in all cases. So that's why we would run a function like this in Lean. And when we run it in this compiler, it ran perfectly. So we know that this is mathematically provable. And we can ask Claude to further explain how these proofs work, and it does a great job at that. Can you explain how these proofs work and what are the different use cases of them? You can use them in basic smart contracts, for example, on Ethereum, they use Lean. You could use it for a simple security protocol, password length check, which is used as handshakes that what are called in web protocols. This is stuff that is highly, highly sensitive and needs mathematical certainty. We can't just be willy-nilly like I did with this post. And so the future of science depends on this kind of advancement in the knowledge base of programming languages like Lean, which offer mathematical provability. And also the whole world of formal software verification is super exciting. And it's something that I really wanna get into. So there's a lot of papers here, hypertree proof search for neural theorem proving. 
This was also a very cool technique. The idea here is that you create a whole Monte Carlo like tree and branch out different possibilities. At the end of the day, all of these techniques are doing the same thing. They're searching through the possible space of solutions to a given theorem, to a proof. It's trying to find a proof and search like brute force is not the best type of search. There's plenty of better search strategies than brute force and we can use these different techniques to find the optimal search strategies. We don't always have to rely on our own intuitions to do these things. We can use AI to do them. So we can start with sciences that are fully verifiable in silico like number theory. And eventually as we move more and more sciences in silico like biology, when quantum computing gets better as Google's Willow chip just showed, we can start simulating the cell. We can start simulating molecules. We can start simulating an entire human body in a computer. And then we can have mathematical verifiability around all of those molecular machinery movements. That, that stuff is so exciting, right? So automated theorem proving is the future. And I want us all to start looking at these papers, looking at this code I'm sharing and learning about it because there's a lot of potential here, okay? And there's a lot of math here, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, reverse mathematics program, all this stuff, very exciting and I'm excited to learn more about this over time. So that's lean. This repository, AG4 masses, alpha geometry for the masses was really great. It shows the potential for bringing more people to this technology by not requiring as much of a GPU. Unfortunately, it's still hard to use. So at the end of the day, I just asked Claude inside of Cursor to build this as a Python Flask app. And here is the prompt that I used. I'm building ScienceFlow, a platform that democratizes scientific discovery by automating the research pipeline, focusing on number theory since it's fully automatable. I need help recreating this beautiful interface in Flask without React. And so I asked Claude to create that interface with React just to mock up an interface. And then I asked it to create the backend in Python Flask. It did that beautifully. And I did that inside of Cursor. And then with the agent, it was able to generate all of these class files. Now, I have to add in my specific Firestore credentials. I have to add in my specific OpenAI credentials for the AI part. But everything else, it's just Python. It's, it's a really simple app, actually. It's, it's very lightweight. But it does something very powerful in that it prompts GPT to generate this code in lean. And it says, you know, don't just generate the code, but generate the formal paper in mathematics, a novel conjecture. Do that for number theory, please. And it asked the reviewer agents, there are three of them, the peer review agents to review that paper and give different scores to it. And so you could see that I have two different class files, both the SciFlow agent, which is going to generate that lean theorem uh, and then it's going to clearly state it, it's going to provide a potential novel math and then a verifier, which is going to run lean, the lean compiler to verify if that actually worked. So we don't have to make baseless claims and then wait for a physicist to then come disprove them. Physicists have better things to do than respond to my shit posts on Twitter, although maybe not because it was a lot of fun. But we need to move this stuff to machines, to in silico. And this is going to accelerate science 1000x. This is one of my life goals. I want to accelerate scientific discovery 1000x. It's a really simple code base. Check it out on GitHub. If you like the video, smash the like button. It really helps promote the video. Check out Recall. It's a great tool. I love using it to learn about AI and all these research papers. And hit subscribe because I'm gonna keep posting videos every week. I'm back, baby. I love you guys. I love you, my wizards. I'm here to stay. For now, I've got to use AI to hopefully solve climate change. So thanks for watching.